when we talk about the gospel of the uh, gospel of Jesus, as we said, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, the gospel of the kingdom, literally the gospel, good news, okay, of the kingdom. That's the Greek word basileia. It means to reign, to rule, uh, to have superiority over. So literally the gospel of the kingdom is the good news of God's superiority over all of his enemies. That's literally what it means. And so if you're going to talk about the gospel of the kingdom, now you're also going to have to demonstrate God's superiority over all his enemies. What are his enemies? Sin, sickness, disease. Isn't that right? All of these things. Anything. Okay. Sin. uh, Well, sin is a lack of righteousness. Sickness and disease is a lack of health. Okay. Anything that has a lack in it. Why? Because God, Jesus did not come so that you may have lack. He came so that you might have life and that in abundance, not even a lack of life, but life in abundance. Amen. So the kingdom is you experiencing life in abundance. Life on this. Now, now listen, there's a difference between life in abundance and an abundant life. Right. See, a drug dealer can have an abundant life. He yeah. can have cars, jewelry, money, all that kind of stuff. But see, that's an abundant life. But that's not life in abundance. Right. See, what we have is life in abundance. Mm-hmm. Amen. That means so much life <clears throat> that it keeps me healthy and strong. And I have enough extra. That's the abundant overflowing to give away to other people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, listen. Okay. Remember what we said in the beginning is that Jesus didn't come to start another religion. But the church has pretty much turned Jesus's movement, his understanding of the kingdom into a new Judaism. Mm -hmm. And there are a place to go, things to do, rituals that we follow that are not supposed to be rituals, but we turn them into rituals if we don't know why we do them. And if we're not really focusing on doing them correctly. Now, I say that because we have to realize that Jesus, as I said, God just wanted to walk with man. He didn't want all the religious things. He didn't want like what the Jews had done to the message even from Moses with all of the trappings and all of the way to dress and having all the things there and even the tassels on the end for them to grab and all like the woman with the issue of blood, things like that. It wasn't for that. It was, and that's the beauty of it is that Jesus came to show us how to just walk with God, how to just live life, not to just be religious. And when you're religious, you can look at other people and go, well, I'm not as bad as him. I'm way better than that person, but I'm at least I'm not that bad. You know, and, and that's okay in religion. Why? Because you need a standard to go by. But the problem is religion doesn't use the right standard. There you go. Because the right standard is Jesus. And if you live the way you have been living with that mindset, you'll never measure up. If you're living in religion, you'll never measure up. Yes, but in Jesus, and that's a beauty, because when Jesus recreates you, now you're a new creation. Now you measure up. Why? Not of your own self, but because of what he did. But you can't discount what he did. And see, it's like, like we would hear here, even in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Everybody knows the scripture. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Now, that word righteousness is funny because we think, oh, that's, you know, that's a religious term. Is it? No, it's not. It's actually a judicial term. And righteousness means to be in right standing with a government. Yep. That's what it means. And you can, you can, now we've taken it and the church has taken it and made it this religious term, but it was never meant to be. So what he's saying is seek first the kingdom of God and right standing with him. And when you do that, see, then you get born again. Now, just like he said, he said, you know, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. Isn't that right? You shall be filled. Now, when you're filled, you don't hunger and thirst anymore. Why? Because you're filled. You get that? Yes. I mean, have you know, best time to go to the grocery store is after you've eaten. <laughs> right? If, if you go before you eat, you're going to buy all kinds of stuff that looks good on the shelf, right? Yes, so, but why? Because if you go after you eat, now you're full, right? But he says, if you seek him, seek his kingdom first, if you seek after righteousness, you will be filled. 
That means that you're not going to be seeking righteousness. See, that's the problem of the church. We take one scripture, and then we see it where it is, and then we don't see what happened and what Jesus did at the new birth. And so we keep going back, and we keep trying to hunger and thirst after righteousness when he's already filled you. And because of that, we're always like, more, 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 more. No, no. When you say more like that, you're actually saying what you did is not good enough. But the Bible says that he satisfies. Isn't that right? So, and, but see, people don't get this. Why? Because m- many people in the church only come to church on Sunday, and the rest of the time, you know, when they leave church, they leave church. And they live the rest of the week however they want to live it. And they're not realizing or thinking about the things of God. And so you have to go in and say, listen, if I'm seeking righteousness and he fills me, now I am full. Guess what? I'm not going to seek righteousness. I'm going to walk righteous. Amen? Why? Because don't be deceived. He that does righteousness is righteous. That's 1 John. You get that? But see, the church doesn't do that. The church is always looking, well, I need more. I need more. I need more. I need this. I need something different. Why? Because you're not walking in what he tells you. See, the first part of the book is to tell us and and to show us how to live this out. If you're going to be righteous with God, you're going to walk like Jesus. That's just the way it is. Why? Because he fulfilled the will of God. You got that? Yeah. And so you're going to walk that way. And, and then we see why we were made righteous and we see the results of it. But see, it's like you've got to see why, what he came to do. Then you let him do it. Then you jump over to the epistles, find out what happened when you got born again, when you became righteous. And then you go, wow, how do I live this out? Now we jump back over to the gospels and watch Jesus live it out. Amen. That's your life. You go from the gospels to the epistles and back to the gospels. The problem is people go to the Gospels, never leave the Gospels, never get to the Epistles, and then they come and they stay in the Gospels. But the problem is they don't see themselves as the people who have been filled, which is who? Jesus. They see themselves as the people coming to Jesus. People always needing something, always needing more. People are never measured up. But if you see the Bible correctly, you look at Jesus and what he did in the Gospels. Then you go and you look in the epistles and see what he did in you. Then when you go back and you look at the gospels, you see Jesus, but you see you. And you realize what he did, I can do. Why? Because he made me righteous. Now, listen, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You get that? But we have to get past that thing of becoming to the point where we are being. That's the essence of it. But the church, for the most part, doesn't want to move to that. Why? Because here's one of the key things that keep people from moving into this. A dependency. Mm -hmm. People want somebody else to do all their spiritual stuff. They want somebody else to tell them what it says, what it means. They want somebody else to do it for them. And if they have a need, they want somebody else to fulfill that need. And they never grow up to realize, I'm supposed to be meeting the needs of others. And when you meet the needs of others, your needs are all met. It's amazing how it works. It is the core concept of sowing and reaping, right? But we have to realize you've got in your head, you've got to start thinking differently of how to live this life. You know, you can, and there's all kinds of ways to do it, I guess, as far as how you would live it out. But you have to actually see yourself in every situation as Jesus in that situation, to say, what would, literally, what would Jesus do here, right? And I'm not talking about the religious way, okay? I'm talking about really, what would he do? 